Welcome to the channel, I'm Amedeo602 and today we're going to talk about RAM in Warzone. You may not realize this, but RAM plays a huge part in Call of Duty Warzone. Before we get started, in addition to YouTube, I just wanted to make sure everyone's aware that I'm out on Twitter, Discord, and Twitch. I've got links to those in the description. Please feel free to join the Discord channel or message me on Twitter if you have any questions that I do not answer in this video. First off, we're going to talk about XMP and DOCP and why you should make sure that those are enabled before you do anything else. After that, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to RAM. We're going to talk about RAM size, RAM speed, cast latency, and how all that impacts the overall speed of the RAM. For the Ryzen owners out there, you'll be excited to hear that there is going to be a whole section of this video dedicated to Ryzen CPUs and RAM and why the two are so interconnected. Then we're going to jump into how RAM impacts Warzone. Finally, I'm going to present a study that I did on my own PC. In this study, I had changed the clock frequency of my RAM just to see how it impacted frames per second in Warzone. You'll definitely want to stick around to the end of the video to hear the results because they may surprise you. And speaking of surprises, one thing that really surprises me is that it is the year 2021 and when I buy memory at the store and I plug it into my PC, it doesn't run at the proper speed. This is something that's going to bite a lot of first time system builders. And who knows, maybe it's bitten you too. But we're going to talk about the first big tip, which is to enable XMP or DOCP. XMP stands for Extreme Memory Profiles, DOCP stands for Direct Overclock Profile, and they're two names for basically the same thing. You can very easily tell the speed of your RAM by opening up Task Manager, clicking on the Performance tab, and then clicking on Memory on the left-hand side. Underneath the Memory Graph on the top right-hand side should say Speed. If the speed reported by Windows does not match the speed of the RAM that you're expecting to see, then you probably need to enable XMP or DOCP in the BIOS. The procedure for this is going to vary based on the motherboard that you have, but typically speaking, all you need to do is reboot the machine, press the delete key to enter the BIOS, and then enable the memory profile. If you can't find this option in your motherboard, search other YouTube videos, I'm sure you'll find it out here somewhere. Let's talk a little bit about RAM fundamentals. For anyone who's not aware, RAM stands for Random Access Memory, and it's basically a place in between the hard drive and the processor where data resides. There are a ton of important numbers for RAM, but the three most important are the amount of the RAM, the speed of the RAM, and something called the cast latency of the RAM. Almost all of you should already be familiar with the size of the RAM. Usually for a modern day computer, this is going to be 16 or 32 gigabytes. For Warzone, I recommend having 16 gigabytes of RAM, although the minimum system requirement is something lower than that. Next up, we have the speed of the RAM. And just like with a CPU, the RAM operates off of a clock. And the faster that clock is, the faster the RAM can operate. Tons of pre-built PCs out there come with 3200 megahertz RAM. While you can definitely play Warzone with 3200 megahertz RAM, I strongly recommend having at least 3600 megahertz RAM. We're going to get into specific details of why 3600 is the magic number. But first, let's talk about cast latency. Cast latency is usually denoted with a capital C or a capital CL, and unlike with size or speed, lower numbers are better. Going along with my recommendation of at least 16 gigabytes of 3600 RAM, I recommend cast latency of 16 or lower. The cast latency is the number of clock cycles it takes to get to the next piece of memory. And if we're really simplifying things, high speed good, high size good, high latency bad. If you're a little bit more of a math nerd like me, I've got a formula on the screen right now that you can use to calculate your ideal latency, given the speed and cast latency of your RAM. And what the heck, we'll go ahead and throw a graph on the screen so you don't have to do the math, you can just look it up on the chart. Feel free to pause the video, take a screenshot of that, send it off to your friends, whatever you need to do. And now that we know what RAM is, let's talk about how RAM impacts Ryzen CPUs. If you've got an Intel processor, or if you're just not interested in the technical details, go ahead and skip on to the next section where we talk about how RAM impacts Warzone. By the way, I do have chapters down in the timeline below, so it should make skipping to the next section super easy for you. Ryzen processors have this thing called the Infinity Fabric, and we're not going to jump into the technical details of how that operates, but it's important to note that the Infinity Fabric should operate at the same frequency as your memory speed for peak performance. If your Infinity Fabric is too fast or too slow for your memory, then things are going to get desynchronized, and it's not going to cause any crashes or anything like that, but it is going to slow down your system. If you remember the episode that I had earlier on GPU versus CPU bottlenecks, you might recall that a bottleneck is defined as one part of your system that's slowing down everything else. 
For Ryzen CPUs, if the clock speed of your Infinity Fabric does not match the clock speed of your memory, that's going to create a huge bottleneck on your CPU. And you can check both of these in Ryzen Master. Just click on Advanced View and make sure that fabric speed is the same as memory speed. If they're both the same, you're all set to go. For the recommended 3600MHz memory, both of these should be set to 1800. And if you're wondering why 3600 memory runs at 1800, it's because it's DDR RAM, which means that it executes instructions on both the rising and falling edge of the clock. But none of that's super important, just know that the memory speed, depending on which tool you're using, is going to appear to be half of its true value. And now you can begin to see why having faster memory helps Ryzen CPUs so much in Call of Duty Warzone. By the way, if you're running something like 3200 with a cast latency of 18, that memory is going to be even slower. And since that fabric clock is going to have to run even slower to keep up with that slower RAM, you're just limiting your CPU performance, creating a CPU bottleneck. And I'm going to go out on a limb here, but I'm going to say probably at least half of the Ryzen owners out there have PC3200 RAM, and could see a huge performance boost just by upgrading to PC3600 RAM with a cast latency of 16 or preferably 14. By the way, I've got some Amazon affiliate links in the description down below with different dual memory kits that I recommend for Warzone. I recommend checking your motherboard's quality vendor list to make sure that the RAM you select is compatible with your motherboard. Just keep in mind, high speed good, high latency bad. Now let's move on to the tests that I performed. I want to show you what happened on my machine. Keep in mind, this is just my PC. Your PC is different from mine, so feel free to do your own testing and let me know in the comments down below what kind of results did you get. The test setup is using a Ryzen 5600X processor, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 graphics card. The graphics card is the EVGA FTW3 Ultra. The memory that we're testing is Crucial Ballistics 3600C16. A lot of people don't like the RGB on the ballistics. Personally, I've got a soft spot for it, and that's what I like to use in my system. To test frame rates, I configured Reva Statistics Server to display several statistics on the screen and log them to a file once per second. Then I dropped into a solo, no-fill game of Plunder and landed on top of the same building for every game. I played through the entire game, and then at the end of the game I collected the statistics and took an average over frame rates over the first five minutes of game time. During the game of Plunder, I stayed in and around the Nakatomi building in the downtown area. This is one of the worst areas for frame rates in Warzone. The test system was also running at 1440p resolution. There's also a link to a video in the description showing the graphics settings that I was using. Our first test was with DOCP completely disabled. In this example, we had 16 gigabytes of 2666 megahertz RAM running with a cast latency of 20. With this test setup, my average FPS was right around 133. I enabled the DOCP overclocking profile for the second test, and then I underclocked the memory to 3200 MHz. I did not adjust any other timings, so my cast latency was still 16 for this test. With the memory running at 3200 MHz with a cast latency of 16, and running the same test as before where I dropped into a solo game of plunder, my average frames per second increased to 141. In other words, this was about an 8 frames per second increase over the unoverclocked DOCP profile. I repeated the same test at 3600 MHz with a cast latency of 16, and my average FPS went all the way up to 147. For a final test, I decided to overclock the memory to 3733 MHz. This also involved overclocking the Infinity Fabric up to 1866. The cast latency stayed at 16 throughout this test. Surprisingly, this test resulted in lower frame rates than 3600 MHz. The frame rate dropped to approximately 143 frames per second on average. I thought for sure that this was a mistake, so I reran the 3600 test and the 3733 tests two more times each. At the end of it, taking an average of the three runs, running at 3600 MHz was much faster on my system than on 3733. At the end of all those tests, taking averages, doing all that kind of good stuff, I ended up with an average of right around 140 frames per second when the memory was running at 3733 MHz, and 149 frames per second when running at 3600. So even though the 3733 MHz memory should have helped the processor run faster, it actually had the opposite effect. And because of this test, that's why I recommend you run 3600 MHz memory for your Ryzen processors. Unfortunately, I do not have any recent desktop Intel processors to check on, so I really can't recommend the best memory for Intel, but for AMD, go with 3600, you won't be disappointed.
Hopefully you weren't disappointed by this video. Let me know that by dropping a like and a comment down below. And if you'd like even more tips, tricks, and tactics for optimizing your PC in Call of Duty Warzone, then subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on my future uploads. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck.